Not only did they come for the race, but for one horse, the most notorious animal ever in French racing history. Winner of the last three Prix d'Amérique, he was going to compete for a fourth one, an all-time record for a race horse. His name, Urazi, the mighty Urazi. Three restaurants are opened on each racing meeting at Vincennes. Located at the top of the grandstand, with a perfect view on the 2,000 meters dirt track, they all together can welcome 1,000 customers. One of them is already very famous for its gourmet cuisine. It is very modestly called the Prestige and can make 200 happy gastronomes. The weather has been exceptionally mild on the north of France this winter and the 29th of January was a warm, sunny and misty afternoon. The lack of wind promoted a bad air pollution of Paris but made the track conditions very fast. Vincennes is the first trotting race track to be visited by a president of the Republic in France. Fifteen minutes before the post time, Mr. François Mitterrand is welcomed by Count Pierre de Montesson, chairman of French Trotting Jockey Club. From the harness stand, they attend the Republican Guard Parade. Now watch carefully the drummer riding the grey horse. While using his hands to beat the drums, he drives his horse with the feet. French Horse Guards is the last regiment of cavalry in the French Army. It was founded in 1802 by Emperor Napoleon I. They have 514 horses basically used for presidential escort. Now the first runners are about to appear on the track for the parade. Here comes Hollyhurst for Italy. Quiton du Corral, a French outsider. There he is. Festongal, another Italian challenger. Napolitano, an American champion who runs now for Sweden. Jeff Spice, the Italian mayor. And the king, Urazi, under the eyes of the president. This horse is a social phenomenon. French people beloved Urazi. Even those who never heard about racing cheer him. The whole country wants him to win. Have a look at the 
Horst Wilkins pick the parade. Doesn't he remind you something? Now, let me introduce the 18 runners of the world's most famous trotting race. First, you read the name of the owner, the earnings of the horse in prize money, and his record, not on a mile, but reduced on a kilometer. Below appears the name of his driver and his winnings. The first two runners have absolutely no chance on four. Number three is Kebir de Chenu, a good performer but not quite that class, often weak at the start. Number four, Ouragan Celeste, a good stare, but the field is too high for him. Number five, Pussycat, a nice mare who likes to go in front. She has very little chance. Number six, Quilon. Game and consistent, he was fourth in a trial race. Not likely to do much better. Number seven, Quiton du Corral, the only French horse to have beaten Ourazi this year. His form hasn't been so good lately. Number eight, Prince Royal. Very prominent last winter, he was quite discreet this season hasn't shown a glint of improvement. Number nine, Kayla Gede. Younger, she was a queen of mounted races. She's done very well in harness since last summer, and she could be a real danger. Back to the crowd, and to Razi. On his heating before the race. And this is Holly Hurst, heating up too. Now back to the other nine runners with number 10 quartz. Hasn't done anything for a long time, hard to fancy. 11, Rêve du Don, very impressive winner of mounted championship. De Cornulier is considered as one of the fiercest opponents to Ourazi. Number 12, Holly Hurst. His first attempt at Vincennes wasn't that bad, perhaps the best of the three Italians. Number 13, Porotto, winner of Prix de Paris last year and second to Ourazi in the Prix de Bourgogne. He could as well do the same here. Number 14, Feston Gal. Much better on flat tracks, he will hardly stay one mile in five furlongs. Number 15, Napoletano, American bred, Swedish challenger of great class. This race is main goal before he goes to stud. Number 16, Potin d'Amour, very disappointing lately, he was Razi's best rival two years ago. 17, Jeff Spies. She has a lot of speed, but is very inexperienced on this track, which is a real handicap. And finally, number 18, Oura Z. Useless to introduce him. The Heart of France beats for him. He aims to win a fourth Prix d'Amérique, a feat that has never been done before. If you look at the odds, you will be amazed. Most of the runners start at 100 to 1. The reason for so many long prices is, again, very simple. Ourazi. Is odd, 10 to 1 on, means that if you bet $10, you will get 11. This record crusher holds another one. Never a horse has drained so much money on his chance. And owing to Urazi, 
the 1989 Prix d'Amérique beats the stakes record for one single race with more than 53 million wagering. Under the starter's orders, and they're off. Feston Gall is not used to the rubbers and breaks the first time. In the meantime, Potin d'Amour takes a flying start to be in the lead now from Kébir de Chenu, then Quilon, and Ourazi is only 67th in the rail side. It's Potin d'Amour, a length clear from Quilon, Quiton du Corral and Kayla Gédé making progress in the outside while Kébir de Chenu is in the rail and Ourazi. Now they're coming past in front of the grandstand for a first time and it's still Potin d'Amour in the lead with Quiton du Corral and Kayla Gédé and Quilon. Ourazi now is coming. Ourazi is coming in fifth position and Porto is moving very rapidly in the outside. Going downhill now, still Potin d'Amour in the lead, but Kayla Gédé is disputing the lead, and now Kayla Gédé is in the lead on rail uh, from Porto, from Festongal in the outside, and Kébir de Chenu, then Quiton du Corral in Ourazi. Festongal, the Italian, breaks another time and will be disqualified. As they're going uphill now, it's still Kayla Gédé in the lead. Half a length from Porto. Bertrand d'Amour is third in rail. Ourazi is fourth. Then comes Napolitano, Quiton du Corral, Quartz, Quilon together. Still Kayla Gédé number nine in the lead. Kayla Gédé going very, very easily with Roger Baudron not asking her any kind of effort. You can see that Roger really controls the race. Poroto, the horse with the yellow bonnet, is second. Razi, already under pressure, tries to keep his place in third, while the pacemaker, Kayla J.D., trots light and smooth, and the Italian Holly Hurd spits fire in the outside, but won't last long. 800 meters from home, still Poroto and Kayla Gede making the running from Razi in the outside. Potin d'Amour still in the rail, Quiton du Corral, then Hollyhurst, then Napolitano, then Prince Royal, Quartz, and Quilon. And in the last bend, about 500 meters from home, it's still Kayla Gede going very easily in the rail from Poroto, then Ourazi, but Ourazi is whipped. First time of his career that he is whipped in the last bend. This is a very bad sign for Ourazi. Kayla Gede, Poroto and Ourazi together in a straight. This is the stretch and Ourazi is coming up in the outside. Will he beat Kayla Gede? But Kayla Gede still maintains in the rail. Kayla Gede is the winner of the Prix d'Amérique. Ourazi will be second. Now is third. Beaten, beaten in the post by Potin d'Amour in the last stride. What a surprise. Kayla Gede to win the Prix d'Amérique at more than 50 to 1. What a surprise to see this seven years old mayor win the greatest classic for trotting in France and the world. What a surprise when form and logics are that much denied. Figure out that a fortnight ago, Ourazi defeated Kayla Gede when giving her a 25 meters handicap. Today, Ourazi was unable to quicken in the stretch, giving way to Potin d'Amour for the second place. Potin was boxed in and sprung out of the field when he found the gap. But this is not an excuse for Ourazi, who faded like he never did. This wasn't our Ourazi. Something must have happened. The Prix d'Amérique is the most beautiful reward this man could dream of. 
and dream is the right word for Roger Baudron, 50, trainer and driver of the winning mare, Kayla Gede. He is one of the finest drivers of Vincennes and yet avows that he fulfills an old child dream when he receives from President Mitterrand the winner's trophy. His smiling wife stands beside him while congratulated by Pierre de Montesquieu. Both are cheered by the crowd just recovering from the defeat of his baby. Being experienced doesn't prevent him to be sensitive. Raj can't avoid tears of joy when going down to the stables to kiss his mare. Roger Baudron is said to be an outstanding tactician. Some people swear he has a clock in the head. As a matter of fact, Kayla Gédé has settled a new record for the Prix d'Amérique with a kilometric reduction of 1 minute 15 seconds 3 tenths, which also is the record of the distance at Vincennes. On such a track with ups and downs, it's really something. Now we'll watch back the race from the following car. You see that Potin d'Amour is soon in the lead, but he doesn't want to stay in the lead because this horse needs to wait in order to finish very rapidly. This is Urazi, Yellow Sills. Kilon is in green with white sleeves, white cap and Poroto improving on the outside with his yellow bonnet. Quiton du Corral is in second and now Kayla Gede is taking the lead. If Putin d'Amour likes to wait, Kayla Gede needs to be in front to win. As you can see now, you can point out Borazi with his yellow cap in the outside, it's already striving to follow the pace. And look, Kela is going very easily. The Italian's breaking, it's finished for him. Kela is going very easily. Can't you see her ears? Potanamur is second. Potanamur is pulling a lot. Then you have a gap of one length and a half. And Urazi is trying to make ground in the outside, but he hasn't got the gate of his great days. On the contrary, Kayla Gede has a beautiful gait. And Roger Baudron doesn't do anything on, on the south. He's just waiting, waiting for the best moment to launch her. And Porto on the same line. Urazi is trying to follow, but not going that easy. And on the outside, Hollyhurst, the Italian, is showing. As all the American bred, he hasn't got stamina, but a good speed and a good turn of foot. Now, Porto seems to have half a length now on Kela but Kela controls, really controls the race. He's going much easier than everybody, including Porto. Razi is there. Razi is in third position, always on the outside, because, you know, Jean-René Goujon doesn't want to take any risk. He doesn't want to be boxed in, so he puts Urazi in the outside because he knows that normally Urazi should win. Now, we think he will win. We think he will now get his fourth Prix d'Amérique. Now, he's taking the lead just a head or half a length or just a neck on Kayla Gede, but Kayla Gede goes back again and Urazi is definitely beaten. The big question is not for Kayla Gede because she's an improving mare, she's got the international level now and she really deserves such a victory. Now the big question is why Ouazi was so disappointing, why was he able to give 25 meters to those horses 
15 days ago and couldn't beat them today on the same scale. We obviously didn't know the answer on 29th of January. We know it now. We learned a few days after that Razi was sick during the race. He had, he suffered from colics. Colics, very bad disease for a horse. Not that serious for him, but this prevented him from winning his fourth Prix d'Amérique.